but uh, the back doorness of it is it, it behind cl the closed doors bothers me f first point but it's also from what I'm gathering on my own research it's a rollout it's basically implementing agenda 21 for the UN which is so unconstitutional it's funny that you bring up legality but this thing would have to violate the Constitution every which way to Sunday even in the way that the they're, they're going about the whole process of getting it done. I mean, we have... Let me, let me speak to that. Let me, I'm glad you brought the question up because I've gotten a number of emails from Nebraskans who are very upset about this closed-door secretive process, and I'm glad you brought it up. Um, let, let me go back and, and cover some basics just so everybody's clear on what happened because there's a lot of moving parts here. The TPP, that's, those are, that's terminology for the Trans-Pacific Partnership, which would be the trade agreement if it was passed. There is no trade agreement yet. That was not what was passed. Uh, if there was a trade agreement under consideration, not only Congress, but you and the public would be able to see the whole thing before we vote on it in Congress. So that's important to clear up. Last week's vote was actually about three things. It was about something called TAA. These acronyms are being thrown all over the place, so let me just walk through them. That's called Trade Adjustment Assistance. I'll, I'll return to that in a moment. Uh, TPA, which is Trade Promotion Authority, and then TPP. So Trade Promotion Authority, TPA, would give the president is a statement by Congress saying the president has the go-ahead to begin negotiating a Trans-Pacific Partnership Trade Agreement, TPP. As a part of all of that, another vote was held on something called Trade Adjustment Assistance, TAA. Not a lot of members voted for it. I voted for it. What this is trying to get at is what I was talking about earlier in the conversation. Trade has been good for Nebraska, it's very beneficial to the agriculture sector. But it's not been beneficial to all of America. And where there have been impacts on, let's say, a textile manufacturer or some type of automobile part manufacturer, where there have been negative impacts on them because of trade, trade adjustment assistance allows for funding for retraining and relocation, a variety of efforts to help get people back on their feet and move in another economic direction. I think that's only fair. So I voted for that. It was the trade adjustment assistance that got entangled up with the trade promotion authority that actually took the bill down. So we do not have either the TP, TPP or TPA at the moment. But to your point about secrecy and behind closed doors and all of that, the TPP, the tra Trans-Pacific Partnership, in its current form, just the form, is being held quietly and being kept secret. I have seen it. I had to myself go into a secret room and sign a non-disclosure document, which I found, to, frankly, I found to be quite, quite offensive. You think? But that's been the process that's been set up to be able to simply look at the document. But again, that's separate from what happened this week, which was just a vote on giving the president the authority based upon what Congress conditions he can do or not in negotiating a, an agreement. So I, I hope this helps clear up a little bit. I, I didn't press don't allow to talk because I wanted to hear your response, Jane. So go ahead. Well, it clears up so many ways. What's scary is uh, it's not a secret that the man in the Oval Office has a pen and a phone. So whether you guys give him the permission or not, this is going to get rammed through anyways. Uh, anytime that we see uh, Republicans, we're so quick to jump on trade. And, and I love that about the party. I think that's a great thing. But just because we label, you know, if we, we crap in a box and we label it trade, that doesn't make it trade. So, I'm just, okay.
Congress and the executive branch, and it is creating uh, dynamics in which we, uh, the president is proposing certain things, but the a certain response among certain people is, hey, how could you trust him on this versus what, and look at his record, given his record on other things. So that's a part of the considerations in, in Congress. On the trade deal, however, I think in the aggregate, it was an interesting mix. It was sort of a transpartisan mix. Well, there were certain Democrats in favor of it. A lot of Republicans were in favor of it. The president is heavily in favor of it. And so there was, a, there was an attempt here to try to craft a way in which you actually lay down the conditions by Congress, the parameters that tell the president exactly what he can do or can't do. Now, he will have wide latitude uh, in negotiating the agreement, but remember, Congress does have the final say as to whether it's a yes or no, and you'll be able to look at that as well as you want. So, thanks, James, for the input. I, I appreciate it. Appreciate the call. You are now in listen-only mode. Uh, Gail, are you on the line? Gail? Yes. Yes. Yeah, go ahead. I lit him up. Yes, go ahead. Uh, yeah. I wish I could speak to you for hours about, you know, like Obamacare and how it's forcing my dad to work.